any kind of government bonds, whether it is the 10 year government bond, the treasury bill, the <coughs> SGL or anything of that sort, right? This webinar is aimed uh, uh, at several things, you know, the agenda, of course, being to popularize government bonds, where we think it's a good time to popularize government bonds. So first question, which you might be asking if you're a regular watcher of, you know, my programs, ki bhai ye admi is not an expert in government bonds. He is supposed to be an expert in options, right? I, mean, I don't know if I'm an expert in options, but you get the meta. Generally, people connect me to options. So what am I doing in bonds? Have, have I become like an influencer who gets onto this, uh, you know, wagon of, yaar, mere ko ek cheez pata hai, matlab, I'm very smart. Let me do the other thing also. No, <laughs> I'm not. So uh, let me put it this way, right? Government bonds were my first love. Uh, my original job, my first job out of college uh, was, of course, uh, you know, in government bonds. Uh, I have... Uh, 2009, uh, first job out of college, when I was 25 years old, was government bond. I studied quite a bit of government bond uh, courses in IAMA where I went to college. Not plugging the college name, but you know, it helps to know that, okay, whoever is talking about this stuff has done some serious course in bond mathematics, which is very complex actually. Uh, and uh, I traded the Indian government 10 year bond for um, uh, a while. After that, I was trading the bonds of a lot of other countries for ICICI, you know. American bonds, uh, European bonds, uh, Swiss bonds, Japanese bonds, a uh, lot of interest rates either other. Uh, so and uh, yeah, so I, I, mean, I think I think at least before I started Sensible, in all honesty, I knew way more about interest rates and bonds than I knew about options. Now maybe I know a little bit more about options. So uh, <laughs> so let's get started. Right enough about me, but but it helps to uh, you know build some credibility because. I'm considered an option guy and not a bond guy by any huh, bond guy. I wonder what that means, but, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. So what do we need for this webinar? I will need, uh, I need a bond trading platform. So I might, uh, uh, end up showing some of the bond purchases, which sensible rate, sensible managers, etc. But, uh, before we do that, right. Uh, your first question should be why is this webinar happening now right it's a fair question to ask boss tum ye webinar abhi kyu kar rahe ho? i have no idea how to remove this theme default okay this is very crazy overlay is nothing okay great so <clears throat> so the first and foremost thing of course is uh, why is this webinar happening now right so let's look at why this webinar <clears throat> sorry webinar is happening now Let me share my screen before proceeding any further, right? Uh, I have a presentation made for this. Let's do that first. Okay. So the first question, of course, is what is this, you know, what is this government securities? But before that question comes a question, key, what other names do they have? So they are called GSEX, of course, government bonds. Uh, they are called sovereign bonds because sovereign means the country and the government and all that. They are also called guilt edge securities because, you know, long time back when you know, things were not materialized and all. Uh, this is how they used to get traded, right? Like basically, uh, they used to be yeah. like a, a paper, like, you know, a paper paper of bond, which used to, so I'm going to make like a cheap drawing of that paper. It will look like, you know, something like this. And then it will have gold, you know, gold at the edges, I say, you know, so it's like gilt edged, you know. So if you search for the word gilt edge, you will see what I'm talking about. And then when you wanted to buy a government bond, this buy sub will come with like a suitcase with, you know, gilt edge papers. And then he'll open it to you and say, boss, dekho, maal aaya hai. <laughs> it used to be how this thing used to be traded, right? Back in the days. They're also called gilts because of gilt edge securities. So why invest in uh, GSEX now? Why is this hap webinar happening now? The GSEC yield is pretty impressive right now, right? Uh, it's giving around 7% plus these days. Uh, even a one year T bill is giving almost 7%. To put things in perspective, GSEC yield is way better than FD yield right now. Fixed deposits are giving lower interest rates than government bonds right now. And here is the irony in that, right? Nobody promotes government securities. They are the best investments, of course, the most safest investments. I'm going to, I, 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 I know I wrong, I use the wrong grammar. There's no most safest, but for emphasis, they are the most safe in, investments right now. 
they give better return than FD, but nobody promotes them simply because if you promote a government bond, nobody pays you, right? Because government is not going to come to you and say, hey, you've done YouTube on your promotion, let's go take a look at that. Oh, that doesn't happen to the government, right? So nobody promotes government bonds, right? Uh, but of course, the, the margins are low for anybody who promotes government bonds, so they don't bother promoting it, right? Uh, they are safer than FDs, and there is a reason why I'm saying this. See, FD is guaranteed by RBI only up to 5 lakh. So in the unforeseen, see, of course, not, uh, banks like ICIC, HDFC, SBI are not going to shut tomorrow, right? But theoretically, 15 years from now, who knows? I'm sure a lot of people in Yes Bank thought it was very safe. I'm sure there are a lot of uh, uh, people <clears throat> invested in some small finance banks, etc., which went down, right? Um, so if you're going to put a significant part of your wealth in investments that give you fixed return, it and you don't need that money and you're going to leave it for 10, 20 years, right? Any given day, it makes more sense to put it in a government security than a bank because maybe ICIC, HDFC, SBI, etc. might be there tomorrow, one year from now, two years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, 15 years, I don't know. You get where I'm going, right? I mean, theoretically, anything can happen in the world. If it comes to your entire wealth, the safest custodian of your entire wealth is the government, right? Because ultimately, government can honor all its debt. They can print money and replay your obligation. Banks can come under financial stress. Bank can come under freezes by central bank regulator, etc. But so, for example, in Maharashtra, there was a case where a small bank <laughs> did some scam and RBI put a freeze on withdrawings from the bank and you know there goes your money. You see the point, right? So if somebody is more trustworthy than a private bank and they are giving you higher return than a private bank and they are giving you guarantee way more than you know private bank, then it does not make any sense to put your money in a private bank. I mean, if you ask me, right? I mean, there are some conditions for this, but you know, liquidity and all that, we'll come to that. But generally, at an attractive yield of 7% right now, when it is better than FD, when it is safer than FD, uh, if and given that you can't put all your money in fixed big equity, right? Because see, the thing is this, right? Most people think that it's about stock picking. You know, investing is not about stock picking. Investing is more about asset allocation than stock picking. I mean, I'll probably do another webinar on that. See, it doesn't matter whether your portfolio is 10% HDFC bank or 15% HDFC bank. What really determines your outcome is whether your portfolio is 40, 60 equity bonds or is it 60, 40 equity bonds or is it 40, 30, 30 equity bond gold, <coughs> stuff like that. Sorry. <coughs> Bangalore weather has been very inclement on my lungs. No, I, 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 should, I should have the same ads for Bangalore weather like they have for smokers. Not that I am a smoker. I mean, you know, they are basically trying to say that Bangalore weather is like smoking and not that I am smoking. But then if Bangalore weather is like smoking, I don't know what to call Delhi weather. Is it like the nuclear bomb aftermath or no. anyway? So if you want to invest 40 to 50 years in fixed income, uh, then this is a very attractive proposition. So if you generally go to a bank, right, they won't have expect uh, and take like a you know uh 30 year FD from you. Even if they do, the rates will not be attractive, but government actually gives you a 30 year bond and you have a guarantee from the sovereign government that boss 30 years ke liye aapke paise ko kuch nahi hoga. so i mean it's 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 a no-brainer actually to invest in your government bond and if you're a trader the gambling problem we all share and enjoy you cannot pledge fds and trade against them as margin of course some banks allow it but then you have to have an fd in the same bank and it cannot be used for overnight margin it can only be used for intraday margin but, but look, and if you use an FD to trade for overnight margin, you'll get penalty interest. I don't understand why, you know, it's not a nice process. Let's just put it that way. Whereas FDs, I mean, government securities are seamlessly pledged to release margin for you if you're a trader, if you're a trader. But if you're not a trader, please uh, ignore everything which we, so ignore the last line and stick to everything else we talked about. And because there is last line, don't start trading, you know. If you, if you want to trade, trade. If you don't want to trade, don't trade. Right? And of course, nation building. You know, uh, you know. I, I kid you not. When I was working in a subsidiary of the Reserve Bank of India as a bond trader, 
my designation red gambler of the nation's wealth that was fun but uh, ultimately we are contributing to uh, the, basically we are contributing to a lot of projects for welfare of the nation when we invest in government bonds right uh, and for the country as in general it's better that the debt is held by its local population and its local banks than being held by foreigners right i mean just that angle now <clears throat> Uh, I mean, come on, I don't want uh, a US or China to come and ask money back from India because that is not good for India's overall bond markets. But if it's, you know, the country, it's way better, right? The people of the country. So let's uh, understand what government bonds are by comparing them with uh, FDs, right? So in a bank FD, uh, bank pays you 7% interest. You all understand that. You know, deposit and the bank gives you a 7% interest. This is the classical definition of a bank FD, correct? Now, every year, bank gives you 7% interest and at the end of it all, they also give you 100 rupees, right? I mean, there are two kinds of schemes, of course. Some are compounding FDs, some are periodic uh, interest release FDs, but, you know, for the purpose of understanding and keeping it simple, we'll look at the periodic interest giving FDs. Now, Bank borrows money from you and repays you with interest. Of course, right? That's how FD works. Otherwise, why would you? <laughs> so, but here's the catch. And this is what I really want you to understand. Technically, 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 when I give 100 rupees to bank to deposit in an FD, I am purchasing an FD from the bank for 100 rupees. And an FD is an instrument that gives me 7 rupees every year and gives 100 rupees in. So I am actually not depositing an FD or opening an FD or something. I am buying an instrument that gives me 7 rupees every year and 100 rupees in the end. Basically, I am purchasing an FD for 100 rupees. So basically, this is what I want you to understand. Instead of thinking, it all, thinking of it in terms of a deposit, think that you are buying an instrument for 100 rupees and that instrument gives you 7 rupees cash flow every year till maturity and then 100 rupees, right? This is just one you know change in understanding which, I, which helps, will help you understand bonds easier. Now, there is seven rupees. So this is how it works, right? So if you went and deposited, uh, if you went to the bank and deposited an FD today, you know, then bank gives you, my God, I really <laughs> love drawing with this thing. Bank gives you periodic interest payments every year. And then comes the big check, right? So I'm going to make this like really big. So, oh, sorry, sorry, not dollar symbol. Yeah, what am I even thinking? <laughs> right. So, bank gives you periodic interest every year and then finally gives you like the big cash out. That's your, <clears throat> right? Uh, that's your big cash out, right? So, this is an FD. I mean, this everybody knows, right? What am I even talking about? On a Sunday morning, I'm calling people to explain them what is an FD. <laughs> Ridiculous, right? Now, let's look at it from a different perspective. Earlier, you gave 100 rupees to bank to give, get a cash flow. Now you are going to give 100 rupees to the government to get a cash flow. Government gives you interest every year and eventually gives 100 rupees just like the bank gives you interest every year and gives 100 rupees. Essentially, bank was borrowing money in the case of FD and paying you interest plus principal. This time, government is borrowing money from you and repays you with interest. And government uses this money to build roads and hospitals and welfare schemes and, you know, infra projects and basically all the expenses we have, right? Uh, and you are buying an FD from the government. So essentially, you're buying an FD from the government, right? And the government is giving you a cash flow in return. So it gives you some interest every year and it eventually gives you the principal back. This instrument that gives a periodic cash flow is called a bond. So I'm going to write that definition here. Bond equal to instrument. That gives you a fixed cash flow every year. FD is a kind of a bond. I mean, practically, FD is a bond. Practically, practically, right? So we all understood what is bond now. All good. So in this case, because the government is issuing it, it's also called a government bond. There are private bonds also issued by Tata and Mahindra and you know Aditya Birla and uh, NHAI. Sorry, NHAI is not a private bond. National Highways Authority of India. 
there is rec rural electrification corporation power finance corporation muthoot finance i mean lot of people in issue bonds and borrow capital basically it's not just the government uh, government and banks it's also a lot of private companies right now let's understand what's a sovereign guarantee government securities are risk free right this is the definition they are always going to repay you this thing that they borrowed always i mean i'm not saying it like you know boss no risk at all right uh, uh in the sense that see you a lot of people say right this is the best instrument this instrument has no risk invest in it i'm not saying in that sense i'm saying it's actually risk free it's theoretically risk free i mean it is the government borrowing money from you they are not going to tell you tomorrow ki boss sorry you know what like we have bankruptcy now right so the definition of risk free rate is actually government bond like when if you open a finance textbook and they say the word risk free rate what they actually mean is the interest rate of government bond so theoretically they are risk free rate in reality they are risk free rate indian government has never defaulted on a loan uh etc etc right so the nation is guaranteeing you that boss will give it back right uh, and this is called a sovereign guarantee and government bonds are, and therefore it's also called sovereign debt however there have been one or two defaults in the past with other countries for example famously south american countries have defaulted in 1990s uh, the us i mean they borrowed from us and defaulted and said sorry was no paisa we were busy exporting <coughs> and never mind <laughs> right and then uh, of course uh, russians right russians have defaulted bonds famously in the 90s um, it uh, ended up uh, you know <laughs> bankrupting this company called uh, ltcm long term capital management uh, I mean, I mean, as if that was not enough, then the East Asian crisis also. I mean, a lot of things affected both. I think LTCM got hit by everything, um, but you know, uh, Indian government has never done that. Generally, prosperous countries with strong economy and you know, promise in the prosper, uh, promise in the, I mean, promise of progress in the future don't do that. Usually, bond defaults happen by vulnerable country. I think Sri Lanka also has a debt problem now. Uh, peso crisis of 90s in south american countries there was russia i mean these countries have defaulted but you know us has never defaulted european countries have generally not defaulted india has never defaulted um, <clears throat> china i don't think i mean i don't even think they borrow they just lend to others right so so this is the sovereign guarantee and this is the risk free rate right ah yes amit thank you amit has uh, told me something greece has defaulted on the loan bonds but we know what happened in greece uh, 10 years back it was not like very nice european and put the entire eurozone uh, you know uh, eurozone region into crisis but anyway coming back to on bonds this is the first most important slide understanding and government bond so the stocks are called tata motors stock sbi and stock stock when I mean, they all have a name right government bond don't have a name they'll have like a number like this this is how it will appear in your broker card trading terminal or your if bond by in place the first two three digits will be a number so i'm going to break this up there is 726 there is gs and 2033 so 2033 is very simple this is the maturity year this is when you get that 100 rupees back then there is gs gs to yaar obvious government security right then comes 726 726 kya hai boss so 726 is 7.26 what it means is that every year you get 7 rupees and 26 paise if you have a bond of uh, oh my god sorry this like a funny comment gaurav is saying you know some telegram channels are offering uh, risk free uh, returns can we call them sovereign telegram channel my god dude <laughs> yeah also pix crisis had happened portugal italy greece uh, and uh, s was what s was uh, who was s oh, is it is it south africa no is some somebody in uh, europe right so anyway coming back to this 726 is uh, the coupon rate what it means is that every year you get 7 rupees 26 paise or if you have a bond of face value 100 from the government that comes directly to your bank account and uh, that thing is uh, and it is split into two uh, and two half yearly payments 726 by 2 3.63 rupees every this thing right like i said gs is government security 2033 is the maturity year phase 
face value is the final maturity amount that you get back. That number is always going to be 100 rupees. Right? This is the face value. Right? Now is where things get uh, <coughs> interesting and uh, uh, you know complex. Uh, I'll show one more user comment, which is a very nice comment from Dance Neon Lights Heart. Usually defaults don't happen in local currency. Government can just print money. Russia was more of a political default. Yes, that is right. Now, uh, but what about the bond price? Right? Spain, yes, Spain was another country in uh, crisis. Thank you, Kolatur Dinesh Kumar. Thank you very much for telling us that. Uh, so bond price is the price at which you buy bond. Now pay absolute extreme attention, right? The price at which you buy bond is called bond price. Now you might be wondering, Ki, boss, ye kaise ho sakta? you just told me that the face value is 100 in FDs. You, I give 7%. I mean, I give 100 rupees in the beginning in FD and I get back 100 rupees in the end, right? But here's where the difference comes. In government bonds, the price at which you enter might not be 100 because these government bonds are things you buy at a price which go up, goes up and down according to something. That's something we'll explore later. But bond price is the price at which you buy the bond. Either you can directly buy from the RBI in an auction. Auction is like an IPO. I'll explain what is an auction and all in, in the coming slides. So just like an investment banks. So there's a relationship, right? Let's say there is a company, right? This is a company I'm producing a factory and all. Then there is a, a bank. So bank is always denominated by money, right? And then there are people. The bank dude will always be there. He is like wearing a suit and tie and all that. This is a banker. Now company goes to the banker to give IPO to people. So banks tell company boss, IPO hum kara denge, aap tension mat Similarly, RBI is the government bank to the government of India. So what GOI does is, you know, they, sorry, sorry, I shouldn't be probably drawing this because it is not a good drawing. Uh, erase all ink on the slide. So Indian in GOI, government of India goes to RBI and says ki bro i need some cash then rbi says ki boss don't worry we'll borrow cash from auction now in this auction the participants are of course people like us which is a minority but the biggest participants are banks so banks and then there are something there's an entity called primary dealer you don't have to know what is a primary dealer and all but basically government of india goes to rbi rbi does auction the bonds go to people banks primary dealers etc etc and you know <clears throat> all of this is how what happens to uh, uh, in an auction right or you can buy from secondary market just like buying stocks you can log into your you know trading account and i'll show you how to do that also but basically just like you buy stocks you can do this thing also right price will almost never be 100 rupees extremely important point it's never going to be 100 rupees almost always of course in a primary auction it will be 100 rupees that we'll come to later and this is because bond prices go up and down unlike fds yeah garo is asking stci yes garo i was in stci securities trading corporation of india primary dealer i was also a primary dealer i used to participate in auctions you know as a primary dealer how cool is that right? it's a lot of fun uh, so, um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good old days. First job, right? A very nice job. It was a lot of fun, right? Uh, now, uh, bond prices go up and down. Unlike an FD, which you can purchase only from a bank. You know, if I put a sell order in a broking terminal and you buy it, you can buy a bond from me. Bonds are traded instruments, right? So that's a very important distinction to understand. Bonds are traded, which also means you can get in and get out theoretically whenever you want. But of course, liquidity is difficult. Bonds are traded. FDs are not traded. Bonds are traded, right? That is why their prices go up and down. Whereas in FDs, interest rates go up and down. Bonds may, uh, you know, uh, 
prices go up and down. So now let's understand what exactly is a bond price and where is it coming from. So let's just reset everything we know and go back to first principles, right? Assume that there's a government security that gives you a coupon of 7%. Now make note something that I'm using the word coupon. I'm not saying interest rate. Bonds are not going to give you a particular interest on your capital. They are always going to give you the fixed coupon. And that's a very, very important distinction. See, when FD says they give you 7%, it means it gives you 7% on whatever your capital is. When government bond says, Ki boss 7% coupon milega, what it means is that if you buy a GSEC whose coupon is 7%, it doesn't matter whether you bought it at 6 rupees, 7 rupees or 100 rupees or 200 rupees or 1000 rupees. They will always give you a 7% fixed payout every year. So it's a fixed coupon and it is not a interest rate, right? We'll understand interest rate later. So this is GSEC that gives you 7 rupees every year on a face value of 100, right? So I'll write that down. Face value equal to 100. Coupon equal to 7. Basically, 7 rupees every year you will get fixed, right? Now, imagine that FD interest rate is 8% right now. Let's just assume that interest rates in the country have gone to 8%. Now, if I put 100 rupees in an FD, it means that I'll get 8 rupees interest, correct? So, if FD interest rate is 8%, if I put 100 rupees in FD, I'll get 8 rupees. What is that? It's so obvious, right? Which means I can actually buy an FD at 100 rupees and get 8% coupon every year or 8% interest every year, right? Which means the GSEC is not giving you 8%. It is only giving you 7% and it is lower, right? In this case, of course, GSEC is better than FD. But I'm saying for illustrating this example, GSEC is lower, right? So if FD is giving you 8% and the price is 100 rupees, remember how we used to buy FD at 100 rupees, that concept. So if I can buy like an 8% interest wala thing at 100 rupees, boss, why would I buy a 7% interest wala thing at 100 rupees? I won't, right? So I'll actually buy it for a price lower than 100 rupees. Maybe it is 99 rupees, some number. We'll actually, you know, find out the actual calculation maths and all later. But what you have to understand is that if something gives you 8% for 100 rupees, you will take 7% coupon. So if there is an instrument that gives you 8 rupees every year for 100 rupees, you will not give 100 rupees for something that gives you 7 rupees every year, right? In this case, bond is giving you a 7% coupon, which means 7% on FV of 100, which means 7 rupees fixed every year because FV is going to be fixed. So 7 rupees every year is not going to be worth 100 rupees simply because there is 8 rupees every year coming from an FD which is also priced at 100 rupees. So the government bond ka price will be lower, right? And the, this price at which you buy the government bond, this is the bond price, right? This is a super important concept. I hope you have understood that. If you want, we can stick around for a couple of seconds there. Basically, har saal 8 rupay milne wala cheez, 100 rupay, right? Har saal 7 rupay milne wala cheez will not be 100 rupay. Why? Because I have to get 8% and to get, and if I'm getting 7 rupees only, so basically my mental logic is what? Yaar, usme mujhe 8% mil raha hai, isme bhi mujhe 8% milna chahiye. And if I have to get 8% interest on an instrument which gives me 7 rupees coupon, I basically have to buy it at a lower price something like 99 rupees, right? 100 pay 7 rupees will not will be only 7%. 99 pay 7 rupees might be 8%, right? I mean, I'm not saying that it's literally eight, like 99. It's some lower number, right? We don't know, whatever the number is. And uh, the, since there are so many other uh, 7 rupees, 7 rupees, 7 rupees, 7 rupees in the future, we can't do this, you know, 7 by 99. So we might want to jump into the logic Ki boss, wo price to simple hai. Let me just do, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, seven divided by x equal to eight percent. Right, eight percent is eight by hundred. Therefore, the answer is x equal to seven hundred divided by eight. It will be roughly, you know, uh, 
कितना होता है यार ये समथिंग लाइक एट एंड समथिंग है बट दैट्स नॉट द सिंपल मैथ बिकॉज इट्स नॉट वन कूपन देर आर सो मेनी कूपन इन द फ्यूचर सो इट्स नॉट गोइंग टू बी दैट सिंपल दट इज अ कॉम्प्लेक्स लॉजिक टू इट बट वील फिगर आउट द एक्जैक्ट मैथ लेटर बट राइट फॉर नाउ इट इज इनफ टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट इट इज गोइंग टू बी लोअर प्राइस बिकॉज for you to get 8% interest with 7% cash flow the price has to be lower than 100 that's it right achla is saying 87.5 but um, you know it won't be 87.5 it will be 87.5 if there's only one interest payment left right but it's not there are so many cash flows coming and last may that other thing is also coming there's a complex formula we'll come to that right abhi ke liye bas itna hi right <laughs> i mean we'll come to that in the same webinar please be patient with me Now let's look at the ULTA case. There's a GSEC that gives a coupon of seven percent every year. FD interest rate is six percent, let's say. And if I put under rupees in FD, I'll get six in six, uh, you know, uh, six rupees interest, right? Uh, in other words, I can buy a six percent FD for hundred rupee price. Basically, there is an instrument that gives six rupees, six rupees, six rupees, six rupees, six rupees every year. Uh, and finally the 100 rupees and this thing is worth 100 rupees right now there is another instrument that gives 7 rupees 7 rupees 7 rupees 7 rupees 7 rupees every year and then gives 100 rupees now obviously this is only giving you 6% return so this should also only give you 6% return right nahi to it's nine safi right people people will pay more for this instrument right because it's giving 7 rupees every year so if the fd is which is 6% is worth 100 rupees gsec at 7% i mean 7% coupon not 7% interest it's a very important distinction coupons don't change coupons always remain the same this should be worth more so i will buy it for more than 100 rupees say 101 rupees i mean it might be 101 110 we are not doing the math now we are saying that i will be willing to pay a better number this price at which i buy this is the bond price again in this case because bond was giving you a higher coupon you will pay more in the previous case bond was giving you a lower coupon than current interest rate you will pay less right so this is very clear right uh, there is a scenario where so based roughly roughly coupon greater than interest rate i mean this is roughly i'm not saying exactly but we'll understand the nuance later whenever the coupon is more than the interest rate bond price greater than 100 if coupon is lower than interest rate then bond will be lower than 100 right i mean very simple so what is that i mean see it all looks like you know extremely <clears throat> complex stuff and all uh when people say bond yield ko fixed income mathematics and all but ultimately it's paisa dude like you pay more money to get more money you pay less money to get less money right it's as simple as that please don't think anything is complex most things are complex because somebody who knows it wants to think others are complex and therefore he is smarter things are not complex right uh, i am a pretty sure i can call my niece right now and tell her ki bro this is how bond prices are work she'll understand it right and i'm i mean and if i can't make her understand this then probably i don't know how to you know uh, basically yeah that is the meta now let's understand the coupon right now interest rate and coupon is not related right because coupon is fixed in the beginning once a bond is issued the coupon is same for the rest of the life so at the time of bond first issue then the coupon will be determined based on the interest rate at that point right because when the bond is issued it is issued at 100 rupees right so at the first issuance of a bond let's say ipo right it's always issued at 100 rupees now uh once it is issued then the price changes but at that point its face value is 100 rupees its issuance price is 100 rupees the interest coupon is of course dependent on how much uh, you know um the interest rate is there so whether i have bond buy a bond for 99 or 100 or 101 the coupon is the same very very important concept and all bonds are issued first time because bonds are reissued right it's not like bond is issued only once 
जैसे कि देर इज सिक्स फोर जी एस ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर सिक्स सिक्सटी नाइन जी एस आई मीन देर इज सिक्स सिक्सटी समथिंग जी एस ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फोर इट इज इश्यूड इन द बिगिनिंग अगेन इश्यूड आई मीन इट इज रीइ्यूड मल्टीपल टाइम्स जस्ट लाइक एफ पी ओस ऑन स्टॉक्स राइट सो ऑल बॉन्ड्स आर इश्यूड फर्स्ट टाइम एट वन हंड्रेड रुपीज कूपन इज डिसाइडेड एट फर्स्ट इश्यूएंस and obviously that coupon is the interest rate which the market agrees on then once that is decided for every subsequent issues yeah that is correct are right? coupon is roughly the interest rate or the ytm i mean i sorry i should not say the word ytm now we come to say the word ytm later but a coupon is the interest rate as the first issue right so whether i buy a bond for 99 or 100 or 101 that's the same here you i saw your comment we'll do a webinar on how to form a view on market promise now coupon is a static number it never changes after the first issuance right <clears throat> which brings us to the most important thing in bond mathematics called ytm yield to maturity yield to maturity is the most important concept to understand in bonds right so you have understood so far coupon you have understood auction you have understood price you have understood you know how price goes up and down we have understood so many things but now i want you to give like extra double focus attention this is about yield to maturity now there are three bonds that mature in 2028 on the same day one of them is 6% coupon which is priced at 99 rupees the other is 7% coupon priced at 100 rupees The third is eight percent coupon priced at hundred and one rupees. Which one is better? Who knows? This is the problem, right? Because bonds have different coupons, and bonds have different interest rates. And here's another problem, right? Bonds give coupons in different years. So if you look at a bond, you initially give hundred. You give seven rupees in the first year, seven rupees in the second year, seven rupees in the third year, seven rupees in the eighth, fourth year. But the problem is, if you look at a one-year interest rate of a bank, one-year interest rate could be like five percent, right? One-year FD. Second-year interest rate could be six percent. Three-year interest rate could be six and a half percent. Four-year interest rate could be seven percent. So there's no one common interest rate, right? Your basically, your problem is, ki boss, kya chal raha hai yahan pe? What is the actual interest rate anyway, right? On the one hand, you are like, hmm. This seems better because eight percent coupon, but then the price is hundred and one. <coughs> On the other hand, you are like, boss, shayad ye chalega, but then the price is ninety nine, but the coupon is only six. I mean, it's not so straightforward. Forget the exact numbers. This is just for illustration. The prices will be more like uh, you know ninety, hundred, and hundred and ten, etc. But basically, just you know, just for understanding, uh, this is the question. So basically. There is no way you can have a number and say that you know there is. <laughs> KD is saying how about one each? You are a diversification man, you are. You know, no, you know one of them is definitely going to be better, right? Um, so the number that you should be looking for is a standard number that compares all these bonds and gives you a single return, and that return is called YTM. In fact, right, the fun part. so if you talk to a bond trader you know like i used to be like 14 years back my god it's been a long time dear god this is like you know it really startled me that when i first traded government bonds there were people you know who were not born okay and now they are in high school okay 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 so uh, <laughs> so bond traders don't ask for price they ask for ytm so for example <clears throat> if i get a call uh from another bond trader asking ki bro quote me like a five year <coughs> five year bond right i won't say five year bond ka price is uh you know uh 101.05 to sell and 101.08 to buy right that's not how i'll quote right i'll say ki dude ytm 8.7 to buy 8.71 to uh, sell right so basically uh i'll 
quote an interest rate and say that you know forget price and all because if i say five year bond which five year bond there are so many five year bonds they all have different groups i said do whichever the bond is i'll give you a ytm and that ytm you know is the number you should look at to invest in bonds whatever is the best ytm generally is a better return right so like i said before most important number in bond tell you how much return you are actually getting this is the roi number for bonds the higher the number the better it is for bond buyer normalizes the coupon for bonds with different coupon uh, this is etc etc right uh, very very important very very important i i'll show you some live examples of ytm so ytm is actually the it's like you know in equity you look at roi and all that right ytm is that number of bonds right always look at ytm to make your investment decisions of course different like a one year itm uh, ytm you cannot compare to a 10 year ytm right so uh, to give you some perspective i'll show you what the current ytms are on different 10 years but it is incorrect to compare like a one year ka ytm with a 10 year ka ytm you have to look at one year ka one bond ka ytm with one year ka other bonds ka ytm right <clears throat> so for example do you want to invest in a government of india bond at 7% one year seven year one year bond of government of india gives you 7% ytm one year bond of or let's make it five year right so five so i'll give you one one cl classic example comparison one year government security gives you five year government security gives you 7% ytm five year security issued by government of karnataka state government gives you 7.3% just an example number right i mean but actual numbers are also pretty close to this one year bond issued by mahindra finance right gives you 8% one year bond issued by muthoot finance gives you 9% one year bond issued by xyz capital which is a new startup gives you 10% this is like ytm comparison right so basically so not one year five year five year g6 7% five year government of karnataka 7.3% five year mahindra 8% five year muthur 9% five year X, xyz capital 10% <coughs> now you will see one interesting thing of course the safer it gets the lower the ytm right because if something is Oh, sorry, sorry. My video is covering the text. Thank you, thank you, Vishwa, for pointing out. The riskier the asset, the higher, you know, uh, the YTM. <coughs> And like R is pointing out, uh, uh, this is called a risk spread, right? So, basically, the riskier something is. the more they will be willing to pay for it right so i'll give you some examples of this right away uh so let's go to some wait one second i'll just finish this again all the interest from the bond <clears throat> so ytm is calculated assuming that the interest from the bond is reinvested in the bond in the same rate but uh but you know that's not exactly how the world works there is some nuance to that because you get interest payments back from the government bonds right so technically technically ytm is almost saying it is a total interest earned from the bond divided by face value <coughs> so kishan singh is asking can you can there be a default when you say risky yes like if sensible issues bonds tomorrow we are a startup 5 years old in option trading space you should definitely think ki boss should i even buy sensible ka bonds kya pata sensible ud jaye right but <laughs> and you will you'll probably get a ytm of 11% on sensible bonds but i mean sensible of course won't issue bonds uh, or ipo looks like but uh, you know but you get the meta so uh, i'll just see if i can drag it to the left i don't think i can drag it to the left they've just fixed the template here so So there is this, there is a complex mathematical formula for YTM. You can study this. This on YouTube. It's like you know, <laughs> YTM equal to uh, you know, there's something like uh, coupon by one plus R plus coupon by one plus R square. Like there's like a long. It's it's only useful if you are appearing for the quant exam of a you know um, <clears throat> B school class. 
But just get a YTM calculator and skip all this maths, right? Just get a YTM calculator. It is very, very, very easy. So now I'm going to demonstrate a YTM calculator, right? So here's the YTM calculator mode. I'm just going to turn this screen off, bring myself back. So there are some things we need for <clears throat> YTM calculator. First of all, we need to figure out, okay, one YTM calculator. The second thing which we want is we need a list of bonds and their YTM to know that, okay, bond prices are correct, etc. Right? So I'm going to do two things, right? <clears throat> I'll show you where to get <clears throat> the uh, bond prices of instruments, right? So let me go back to my first employer. Securities Trading Corporation of India. They are uh, a primary dealer, uh, you know, not paid promotion. They are a subsidiary of RBI and <coughs> several other banks in India. <coughs> but, you know, <coughs> I'm going to go to their website and show you how to see the YTMs of current government bonds, some good government bonds, which are very liquid and all, right? So this is STCA primary dealer. I, I am going to sh show this, send this video to my, you know, Ex boss <coughs> and tell him, bro, promotion ki aapka. <laughs> So, uh, but anyway, I feel nice. They were the, I mean, I think I learned all about government bonds from them. And I think I got into trading because they gave me the first lucky break to trade, right? I mean, if they hadn't put me on trading, I don't think I would have been in trading. So, but I was 25 years old and, you know, I quit the company in six months because I wanted to trade more. <laughs> what an ass, right? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there's, you can go to STCA primary dealer, you can go to research and publication. There's something called daily market update. There's a reason why I'm telling you this is a reliable source. <clears throat> I mean, see, I joined STCA in 2009, right? And this is 2023. They have published daily market update every year for the last 14 years. And that is tremendous, right? Like, I mean, even I have published some of this. I used to write some this on some days, but it is incredible that a company which is largely a semi PSU published a daily market update every year a day for the last 14 years without fail it is like I mean it's nothing short of incredible they've done that and you know my my deepest respect if I mean if you're watching this now or if you watch this later <clears throat> I don't think they're watching it now I don't think they know I'm doing this <laughs> but, but but you can go to this report and you can see this right there are some benchmark securities. <coughs> benchmark securities normally means, see, there are many bonds which trade in one year. There are many bonds which have a tenure of uh, two year, three year, four year, etc. There is one bond which is closest to the one year. That thing is called benchmark, right? So 669 GS 2024. I'll just magnify this. This is the benchmark for one year. This is the benchmark for two years. This is the benchmark for three year. This is the benchmark for four year, five. I mean, you can see all these benchmarks, right? <clears throat> this tells you the price. This tells you the YTM, yield to maturity. So you can see this, right? Roughly three pesa here is two points in yield. But interestingly, in a long term security, a three pesa, three point zero three. Oh, just, just let me just illustrate this, right? Look at this. This is 682 and 684.02% ka difference. This is 21st June ka price. This is 22nd June ka price. So when yield went up two basis points, price went down three pesa in one year term, right? And of course, yield and price are inversely correlated. Why? Because higher the yield, lower the price at which you buy. Lower the yield, higher the price at which you buy. So a high <coughs> YTM means that you are getting uh, it at a low price. A low YTM means that you are getting it at a high price, right? So, but then look at this, right? Yaha pay also 729, 732, 0.03 ka basis point difference. 0 0.03 points ka difference, right? Or three basis points. 0 0.01 is called a basis point. But the price difference is like 40 pesa. So, you know, a small fluctuation in yield in the near term might be only a few pesa. But a small fluctuation in yield in the far term is like a lot of pesa, right? 
<clears throat> so this is hardly any change because of yield change, but this is half a percent in price terms, right? A 0.03% change in yield is half a percent, 0.4 percent change in price terms. This is an important thing to understand. We'll rediscover, but that's not why we are here. We are here to show you a YTM calculator <coughs> and to show you <coughs> a calculation. Uh, this thing. So, like RA is saying, RA seems to be like an expert here. RA, yes, yes, you're right, dude. You're absolutely right. I think you're all, you are also a bond trader. A lot many more coupons to discount. That's why this is happening. Yes, right. <coughs> so, now let's go to <coughs> SEBI YTM calculator. <coughs> So I'm going to uh, show you a bond yield calculator run by nobody other than Sebi. No promotion. No, of course, no. <laughs> Sebi. <laughs> so the, the current price is uh, 99.85. So I'm going to enter the current price here. This is 100. 100 is the par value, face value, whatever you call it. Coupon rate is how much is the coupon rate? This is 669 GS, right? So coupon rate is 6.69, right? Years to maturity. So uh, there is a way to find this out. List of uh, outstanding government bonus, right? If you search this, you'll get RBI's page, outstanding government securities. You can get this uh, in Excel format also. So I'm going to actually, I'm not going to do Excel, but it's okay. So 669 is uh, here, right? This is maturing on 27th June, 2024. So that is like uh, 366, 367 days, right? So that is practically one year, 1.0 something year, right? Like uh, June to June. So I'm going to put this as one year, right, roughly. So you can say years to maturity is one. And then if you hit calculate, you'll see that yield to maturity is 6.85. Current yield, you can ignore it. So now you have an ITM calculator 6.85, right? So this is a SEBI calculator with which you can calculate YTM. <clears throat> the other thing you can, now I'll just do one more example. <clears throat> 741 GS 2036, right? Uh, 2062 let they are, lumbar killing right? Uh, this is 2062, right? Okay. So uh, what's the, sorry. 701.02 is the price. Par value is 100. Coupon rate is uh, this 740, right? 740 GS. And years to maturity, I'm going to need Excel to do that. 740 GS. So I'll, I'll look at the outstanding 740 car maturity date. So this is nicely arranged by date and all 20. 62, 740 GS Sky R20. Oh, wait, when is it? 740 GS 2062. <clears throat> Why is it not listed here? <clears throat> yeah, it's listed here. 19th September 2062. Right? So let me see how many years is that. 19th September 2062 minus today. I can just do this on Google. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Minus two. So I, I'll just I'll open it on. Oh, no. The power went off at my place, but I have a UPS backup for my Wi Fi. Should not create a problem? Hopefully, yeah, it shouldn't create a problem. So, this is the date equal to this date minus today. That is 14,331 days. So I'll have to divide it by 365. 39.26 years. See, spectacular. 39.26 years ka FD pays 7% up to dega. Uh, so 39.26. Calculate. Oh, sorry, 39.26. Coupon rate is 7.4. I made a mistake there. So just double checking all the details. 740 GS 2062, uh, 101.02 rupees price, 100 rupee price value, 740 coupon rate, years to maturity 39.26, right? 
Yeah, 30, I, I, it's not taking that 26. So you're seeing that the, but it's okay, right? 26, 39 years may 26 ka kya importance hai. You can see that yield to maturity is 732. And we can reach a cross check here, 732 bingo, right? So now you know how to calculate a YTM. You don't need to know anything about, you know, YTM calculation, the maths. You can just go to a calculator and find out. And if you are more interested, there's another trick, you know, this time promotion for Google Sheets. <laughs> there's a, there is a this thing called a, a yield, right? You can actually do a few formula called yield. And once you open yield, you can see the settlement date, maturity date, rate, price, redemption, frequency, <clears throat> blah, 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 right? If you want to understand what all these fields are, just Google search for yield Google Sheets formula. So now you can see <clears throat> this is a yield formula. This is a support page. Settlement is the day, settlement date of security. That is day T plus two, day after tomorrow. Maturity is the maturity rate. rate is the rate of interest. Price is the face value. Redemption is the price value. Uh, so price is your price of buying. Redemption is the face value. Frequency is the coupon payment frequency. Day count convention, it's okay. I mean, it's not a big deal. India follows, I think, 365. <clears throat> but, uh, uh, th but let's just do this also, right? So I'm going to make this thing interesting. We'll do the yield formula of Google. Y-E-I-L-D. Settlement is uh, uh, 25th, 27 June 27, 06. 2023 comma maturity is <clears throat> 19 September is 09 right 2062 rate is 101 sorry rate is 740 7.4 uh, price is 100 and how much was it 101 right 101.02 Redemption is what is redemption formula? Redemption is the redemption of amount that is face value. Uh, 100 and frequency is 2. Day count convention is uh, it doesn't matter much, but I'll just put 365. I think I remember India followed 365. What is this now? Function yield parameter value is negative. Should be positive or zero. I think it's because I put uh, this is uh, 0 0.074. What parameter? One value is negative. Oh, okay, because uh, one second. I'll just take an example. I'm also figuring this out. We ended using date to date. Uh, yeah, let me just put these things. Uh, like this right uh, this is better because if i do it like this uh, <clears throat> settlement equal to today <clears throat> plus two <clears throat> maturity equal to 1906 2022 right and <clears throat> what are the other parameters <clears throat> Oh, I put this thing wrong. Yeah, I got it. Uh, this is 7.5%, right? 7.5% rate, price, redemption, frequency, day count, convert. <clears throat> frequency, day count. I'll, I'll, I'll increase the size of all of this. Please don't worry. Let's make it. Let's go for large. Ready? Oh. Okay. Rate, price, redemption, frequency, basis. Okay. Basis for the rate is seven point four percent. Price is hundred and one point. Sorry, how much is the price? Hundred and one point zero two. 100 frequency is 2 day count is 3 right uh, <clears throat> this should work i haven't tried this before but i just realized that this also has a formula equal to yield of <clears throat> settlement date comma maturity date comma rate 
comma price comma redemption comma frequency comma three yes oh thank god <coughs> would have been pretty embarrassing if this didn't work so of course i have to do in 200 because it is showing in percentage so now you can see that the yield to maturity is uh, 7.32 percent which is the <coughs> which is the uh, price on uh, 725 gs which is on, same as stca website right now so now we know everything is fine everything works etc etc but here's the important thing so somebody was asking me why am i doing all this balaji is asking why am i doing all this when it is available on stca site <coughs> balaji the reason is <coughs> Because tomorrow you might have to price it on your own for a bond that is not given on STCA website. You might have to find out price from yield, uh, which is not there on SEBI website. SEBI website only gives you yield from price, right? So you need to know. So if you know how to do it in Excel, you can use a function called solver, which can tell you the price given the yield and yield given the price, right? And always it is good to know things from first principles and, you know, uh, how, how to figure it using an Excel because, you know, everything you can do in the world using any app, you can do it till <coughs> with Excel. So, so this is how yield calculation is done and yield tells you <coughs> how much is the real return you are getting on this thing. And I'll just write one important principle. High yield implies better return implies low price low yield implies lower return usually implies high price when yield rises price falls when price rises yields fall when uh, when yield fluctuates Longer term bond prices change way more, right? This is these are all the things we understood, right? Uh, Ashla is asking, where is the calculator in SEBI site? Ashla, I have no idea. I also went to Google and said SEBI price yield calculator, right? Uh, Amit is asked, saying, you will be surely dead by 26 to maybe Amit, I'll also be gone by then, but you know, we'll have kids or other loved ones or the kids of our <coughs> siblings and you know, or you know, people who we have set aside money for, they will still get 7% interest. And they'll really say, Ki Dada ji achhe admi the, when if the interest rates of FDs are low then. Right? So, the next segment, I have a question. Should we take a break here or not? Because in the next session, next segment, right? One second. Let me just uh, stop sharing this because now you have understood all of this. You also know there's a yield karke formula. If you don't understand yield formula, just search Google for Google Sheets yield and it will give you the documentation on that formula, right? It's very simple. So coming back to, so I just finished the YTM calculator demo. Now, next topic is how do bond prices change, right? This is also a very important topic. Uh, maybe it is good if we take a break. So I'm going to give a five minute break. We'll be back at 11.10. Achla, you are that studious person in college who you should tell the teacher, 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 no break. I'll sit in front bench. Let's have more. But trust me, I have been a backbencher all my life. You know, most people don't believe me. And they think I'm bluffing when I say I have been a backbencher. But I literally used to be a backbencher in every single class from 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, undergrad, postgrad, everything. So I, I don't have the stamina for 5-10 minutes. We'll see you at 11.15 again. And when we are back, we'll talk about some important topics. One is, of course, how do bond prices change? The other is taxation. Third is where to get the bonds from, how to participate in an auction, how to actually invest, etc., etc. Right? Five minutes, we'll refresh our brains and come back. 11:15, uh, we'll resume. Right? Uh, let me just write that down. Back at 11:15 with more stuff and stuff equal to <clears throat> taxation where to buy 
हाउ टू ट्रेड बॉन्ड्स सट्टा तो इसमें भी आप लगा सकते हो नहीं एंड एंड देर आर नेगेटिव पॉइंट ऑल्सो ऑफ बॉन्ड्स द कॉन्स ऑफ बॉन्ड्स एंड कपल ऑफ मोर टॉपिक्स आफ्टर द ब्रेक द सेशन विल प्रॉब्लम बी ओनली फोर्टी मिनट्स सो प्लीज कम बैक आफ्टर ब्रेक लेवन फिफ्टीन वील सी यू अगेन टिल देन यू नो वॉक अराउंड मूव सम have a cup of coffee etc etc see you
and we are back so i'll just you know, give one more minute because people might be coming so all right let's start <coughs> with the rest now I, I just you know clear everything so then it brings us to the question of how do bond prices change bhavesh bhai why are you calling me ashwadhama what is this ashwadhama thing you know, I, I i know that you know character in mahabharat who is ashwadhama but what's the connection between me and this guy uh, <laughs> so interest rates are the single biggest determinant of bond prices right the single most important determinant why because like we said uh, earlier something that gives me 7% will be priced at 100 rupees if the interest rate is 7%. It will be priced at more than 100 rupees if interest rate is less than 7%. It will be priced at less than 100 rupees <clears throat> at 7% at greater than 7%. So basically interest rate by <clears throat> government government RBI is the single biggest determinant of uh, you know this. Pratim, in, Pratim is saying investing in bonds and FDs is just silly. Should we just put in one's money in blue chip stocks? Pratim, here's the thing, right? It's not, life is not as simple as that. There's something called asset allegation. You cannot have all your money in equities. Maybe you can do that when you are 20 years old, right? You cannot tell a 60 year old person to put all their money in equities. People need to have a healthy balance. Yes, when you are younger, you should put majority of your money to FD. If you are very old, sorry, if you are younger, you should put majority of your money in bonds. Sorry, in bonds, in equities. When you are very old, you should put majority of your money in you know, uh, liquid instruments because you might need that money. Your basic requirements, you know, the money which you really, really need should entirely be in FD and your growth capital should entirely be in equity. I understand that. But to issue a blanket statement like you, you should have zero money in bonds, I think that's just irresponsible, right? Because imagine in 2008, September, somebody put all their money in equity. Their net worth reduces to half in six months later. Of course, yes, 10 years later, it made, became three times. But what if you were that person? You who saw 30, 40 percent of the net worth evaporate in a matter of three, four months. Will you hold on to that? You won't, right? I won't. I know I won't. So this is the point where you should understand that there is a mixture of assets which I've allocated, which could be across equities, bonds, gold, real estate, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Like allocating everything in a single asset class also has a certain degree of recency bias because. Last 20 years have been the greatest and the most spectacular uh, bond market in our history, which need not always be the case, right, in, in human history. Uh, so when interest rates go up, bond prices fall. When interest rates go down, bond prices rise. And of course, it depends on liquidity in the system, which is when RBI pumps in more liquidity into the system, bond prices go up. When <clears throat> interest rates goes down, Liquidity goes down, bond prices also fall, right? Expectation of interest, of course, right? If interest rates can be the determinant, inter expectation of interest rates can also be a determinant. And then there is, of course, supply and demand when people are buying and selling. And anything that affects above points, right? For example, inflation, uh, monetary policy, budget, geopolitics, etc., etc., they are all um, determinants of uh, interest rate, right? So, that is that. Now, how does interest rate affect bond price? Right? We have done this before, but I'll quickly recap it. You have a bond that gives 7% that is trading at 100 rupees. Right? I'm going to revisit something which we talked about in a very different spin. You have a bond that gives 7% and it is trading at 7%. And imagine that the that's because the current interest rate is 7%. Right? Now, 
again this is a slow simplification like i said before there's no one interest rate there are multiple interest rates across different different years so for example you're getting one seven percent interest at in one year but that one year interest rate is six percent then it will be six and a half percent per you're getting to i mean that's complication but we'll oversimplify and assume there's one interest rate uh, now let's say rba comes and says boss i'm increasing repo rate interest rate goes up now interest rate is now increased to eight percent now you can invest 100 rupees and get 8% every year in a new bond, right? Um, that gives 7%. I'll just uh, say coupon. This is coupon. This is not yield to maturity. But in this case, when a 7% coupon bond is trading at 100 rupees, when, you know, when bonds are trading at face value, coupon equal to YTM, right? I mean, this is very simple, right? What's the complication? Obviously, coupon equal to YTM when when bond price equal to face value equal to 100 right i mean that's that's yeah right so now rba comes on you know pv and says boss bahut ho gaya, art person karenge. Uh, now you can in invest 100 rupees and get eight percent every year which means your original bond is only giving you seven percent right so no one is going to buy that you know <coughs> Uh, from you at 100 rupees and they will buy it at a price that gives you 8% return which is YTM right so this price will be a lower price and when a bond that gives 7% is priced at 8% YTM it is worth a lot less than sorry 100 rupees right it won't be at 100 rupees that's how bond prices change so when interest rate goes up bond prices fall Now let's look at interest rate going down. Interest rate goes down to 6% and you can invest 100 rupees and get 6% every year. But your bond actually gives you 7%. And if a 6% interest is worth 100 rupees, then 7% interest is worth more, right? Because 7% coupon, coupon is worth more. So if the current interest rate is 6%, a 7% coupon is worth more and people will be willing to more, pay more to get a 7% coupon. So the buyers, will pay you a higher price and if a bond that gives 7% is priced at 6% YTM, YTM, remember this YTM number, obviously this is worth more than 100, which is why when interest rate goes down, bond price goes up. Basically 7% coupon is getting priced at 6% YTM, so the bond price will be more than 100. So interest rate up, bond price down, interest rate down, bond price up, right? So let's quickly recap everything which we talked about so far. When interest rate goes up, bond price fall. When interest rate goes down, bond price rise. When a bond that gives a 7% coupon is trading at 8% YTM, the price is lower than 100. When a bond that gives coupon of 7% is trading at 6% YTM, the price is more than 100. And like I said earlier, interest rate fluctuations affect long-term bond prices way more than short-term bond prices. There is a reason for that, that is multiple coupon discounting and all that. But you know, now the question is, okay, <clears throat> where have you seen interest rates? Where can I get YTM? Of course, the STCA PDA website that I saw you showed you is a great place. Uh, there's one more way, RBI interest rate, just search for RBI interest rate and you will get a page saying, uh, sorry, what's the search string? I'll show you the search string. Google search RBI interest rates. Let me just share the screen. I want to search RBI interest rates. And I should get this RBI page that ending in, I think this is the one, right? No, sorry. Uh, I think that link is somewhere else weekly statistical supplement rba has something called weekly statistical supplement uh, let me just 
weekly statistical payment. Yeah. So you go to RBA weekly statistical supplement. There's something called ratios and rates. Click on this thing and you will see. Okay. So 91 day table is trading at. Uh, so, so as of June 16th last week, 91 day table was trading at uh, 6.79. Last year, 2022, this was trading at 5.06. You can see that also here. In 2023, it is trading at 6.79 yield. The, you can see the declining trend. 182 day bill is giving you 7%. 364 day T bill is giving you 7%. 10 year T bill is giving uh, GSEC is giving you 7.0%. Right. So not bad. Right. Uh, this is one thing. Now let me go back to uh my ppt again how oh, can you invest in government bonds you can directly do it from rbi auction which is like an IPO or an FPO, you can also do it from the secondary market through your broker, <coughs> which is like trading equity. It's not very liquid. Uh, and you can also invest in mutual fund that invest in G6. Three routes, right? First is directly from RBA auction. The second is uh, from the secondary market through your broker. The third is through mutual funds and G6. <clears throat> Sorry. The third is through mutual funds that invest in G6, right? So I'll show you examples of all of this. And in the third part, there are two parts, fixed maturity plans and variable maturity plans. We'll also explain that. Now, RBI auction is conducted every Friday. Most brokers accept bids till Thursday night. Different bonds are up for auction every day. Uh, institutions and retail investors both bid for it. Everyone gets it at the same cutoff price. Uh, uh, and it is very similar to an IPO issue or an FPO issue. And the minimum bet is around 100 bonds and uh, 10,000 rupees, right? Yes, NPF, PPF, NPS, PPF, all these guys invest in this thing. So even if you think you don't have any bonds right now, you have some bonds exposure because EPFO and if you have an NBS, uh, NPS plan uh, that is uses uh, this thing. So I'm uh, somebody, the RA is asking any idea for RBA direct platform. I have not used it. I'm, you know, I, I have only, I have only got, you know, uh, I use it through coin. Uh, so <clears throat> let me just show some examples in a live trading screen, right? One second, I'll just open my trading account. Authenticator. The sound is fine, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so you can see <clears throat> the trading account. Uh, this is uh, uh, our company account. So if I do 669GS2024, this is how I search for it, right? And you can see that. Uh, Abhi, you can't see, unfortunately, but it trades like this, right? This is how you can trade G6. This is directly through your broker, right? Now, the other thing you can do is you can go to. So this is what I used to, you know, uh, this is what I use for all my 
mutual funds. I mean, again, not promoting. It's just that I happen to be a customer even before you know Sensible Zero the everything came in. <coughs> not my money, company's money. Please don't misunderstand. Uh, and I, I put this disclaimer every time. No, I'm just I'm just safekeeping this money, guarding this money for the company. So uh, one way to do it is you can go to government bonds here, right? Now. Basically, you go here and say government bonds, and tomorrow, uh, uh, tomorrow T bills will populate. Tomorrow, state development loans will populate, and tomorrow, government of India bonds will populate. I'll show you what a screenshot looks like, but basically, it comes here, right? This is the second way to do mutual funds. The third way to do mutual funds is you can go to <coughs> mutual funds. <coughs> you can search for, <coughs> uh, sorry explore you can go to category <clears throat> debt funds and subcategory is uh, guilt guilt remember with the, with the word guilt we talked about earlier and now you can see all the guilt fund sba magnum guilt fund icic prudential guilt fund kota guilt fund hdfc guilt fund bandhan gsec fund blah 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 like lot of gsec funds right now there are two types um, Fixed maturity and uh, variable maturity. We we'll look at both of them also, right? But I just quickly showed you uh, what all are the different uh, <coughs> GSEC funds which are available. One is uh, 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 <coughs> one is uh, fixed maturity. One is you can participate directly through you know your broker's terminal, whether it is Kite or something else. Then you can uh, participate in RBA auction by going to mutual funds, government bonds. The third is you can go to mutual funds and explore and do it, right? So these are the three ways in which you can uh, participate in uh, uh, investing in uh, government bonds, right? And then there's RBA retail, but I don't have the account, but I would, I'll try to do a webinar on how to use RBA retail also. I'll tell you why also I don't have RBA retail. I invest in GSEX and use that money, GSEX investment to pledge to get margin to trade options, right? So basically, if I buy it from RBA retail, I can't pledge it and get margin. So my almost all needs are you know, on the area of uh, pledging and margin. So personally, I don't have this, uh, uh, like I don't use RT, RBA, RBA retail, I'm sure is a great platform. It's just that I can't pledge it and trade on my broker if I have RBA mutual fund, right? Now let's go to um, the PPT back again. Yeah, as Amit is uh, repeatedly saying in the comments, RBA retail purchases are not pledgeable for margin, right? <clears throat> now, uh, trading these six, I told you how, how to, sorry. We explained, oh, sorry. I don't know what is happening here. Okay. Trading GSEC is very simple. You can buy the GSEC when the price is. <clears throat> okay, there's something wrong with my mouse pad. Okay. Yeah, you can buy the GSEC when the price is high, <clears throat> price is low, and YTM is high. And you can sell it when <clears throat> uh, price is high and YTM is low, right? So typically, right, if you even invest in GSEX right now, right, and uh, <clears throat> if you do this thing right now, right, uh, it's coming at probably a very good price and at attractive YTM. Two years from now, maybe the prices have gone up higher. So for two years, we get a 7% return. So the ideal scenario is this, right? Let's say Nifty is somewhere near the peak. At that time, government bonds will be dirt cheap because interest rates are very high. And that is when you typically enter the government bonds. For the next two to five years, Nifty might be in a downtrend. When Nifty is in a downtrend, you earn like 7% yield on government bonds. And then there might be a market crash, at which point government bond prices will go up, right? So during market crashes, so I'll just, uh, you know, Write this down. Uh, GSEC prices are low typically during bull markets, right? 
So GSEC prices going low is a very bull market phenomenon. Oh, that is crazy. My notepad is not working. What the way? Oh, okay, now everything is back. So basically, this is usually during bull markets. So if you can really time this, right? During bull markets, put all your money in G6. And during bear markets, G6 prices will be very high because interest rates will be low. So, <clears throat> and then <clears throat> basically, ideally, if you're like a spectacular trader, buy G6 during equity bull markets at the peak of them. And then equity crashes, you run G6. And then G6 rises, equity crashes, you <clears throat> exit G6 during bear markets and then put money back into equity. So basically equity and G6 are inversely correlated simply because of interest rates, right? During bull markets, interest rates are high. During bear markets, interest rate, I mean, classical economic theory, all of that. Personally, I moved uh, all my <coughs> uh, holdings from equities to G6 in 2021, September or something. And I've not regretted it because Nifty still hasn't crossed that high, but uh, my G6 portfolio is up roughly you know, 11, 12%. So I think, smart decision uh, and because a lot of it was also in gsec mutual funds they are uh, tax and in tax benefited and indexation benefited right now it's not there but but basically this is the deal and you can't obviously do this buy sell business with fd right that's the key part to understand here so so you can trade gsec like this technically you can even do mutual fund like that now comes the most important slide this is the most important slide because this is the least understood slide and this is what most people don't want to understand but please understand one thing your life's outcomes there are very few things which impact your life's outcome as much as how well you do taxes so always do your taxes really really well understand all your taxes and try to optimize your taxes as much as you can <clears throat> e6 interest is taxed at whatever is your tax lab. So if you are at 10% tax lab person, 10% is your interest. You are a 20% tax lab person, <clears throat> you are 20% tax lab. You are at a 30% tax lab person, highest is 35, I think. You are at that tax lab interest rate, right? Now, if you buy and sell within a year, <clears throat> then it is short term capital gain. And the short term capital gain is again at whatever is your tax lab. Right. So interest is at your staff tax lab. Short term capital gain is at your tax lab. Both of them are at your tax lab. Altamash, I saw your question. I'll try to answer it towards the end. Now, if you buy and sell after one year, then it is considered to be LTCG. And that LTCG long term capital gain is at 10.4%. Right. Now, ideally, uh, so here's the thing, right? This is a little tricky. I'm talking to some tax experts on what should be the residual maturity of the bond because i can't buy like a one year one day bond sell it after one year and say keep boss ltcg right that's kind of scammy because it's not really capital gain i am actually benefiting mostly from the interest right if i buy like a 366 day bond uh, i don't have any capital gain when bond has one day left right it is all interest so i'm trying to scam the government and pass off interest as capital gain when i'm doing that so tax experts recommend that if you're going to buy and sell a bond within a, after a period of one year, uh, and then if you want to say that this is capital gain, it's better to have the, the remaining maturity of the bond at three years. I, I mean, again, this is a very <clears throat> uh, kind of tricky part, right? Because like tax is something where there are interpretations. Like I remember uh, a lot of, lot of people used to say, Key zero coupon bonds, like there is something called zero coupon bonds. They are uh, people, what they'll do is they'll buy it at 96 rupees and sell it at 99 rupees after one year. And the interest in value, increase in value is not capital, it's purely interest. But they'll say, no, no, I bought at 96, sell, sold at 99. This is all a capital gain. So that scam used to happen. So at some point, you know, you have to be careful about this. But generally, LTCG is 10.5%. But if you're doing that, <clears throat> try to do it with a or let me put it this way, right? 
ask yourself what are you really doing if you think you are doing you are passing off interest as capital gain probably you shouldn't do that because it's not really worth it to get into uh, you know wrong stuff with taxes and uh, gsec mf of course is gsec mutual fund uh and if you hold them for less than 3 years it is considered short term capital gain and it is charged at slab rate and if you do it for more than 3 years it is considered long term capital gain at 20.8% till march 31st 2023 there was also an indexation benefit available for this which is you'll again be given a better tax rate because inflation will be reduced and all that but it's not there anymore so though it's not worth discussing but basically this is a tax treatment if you do direct gsec interest is at your slab rate stcg at your slab rate ltcg is at 10.4% right <clears throat> if you do direct investment in gsec through mutual funds stcg short term capital gain if you enter and exit within 3 years you will be charged at your slab rate whatever it is right so if your slab rate is 10% great awesome right but if your slab rate is 35% then you have to pay 35% so it depends on who you are and also please get these things uh, clarified with a good ca a good ca charges you probably like so if you are fairly you know looking at a lot of taxes a good ca charges you like you know uh, anywhere between 1000 and 5000 depending on how big your corpus is but it's really really eliminating a lot of headache from you especially if that money means nothing to you so uh, depending on who you are and how much money you are looking at and what kind of taxes you have to pay and how complex your taxation is maybe it's a good idea to consult a ca before doing all this stuff right but generally because there are some exceptions right so there are some people for example there is a clause inside tax law which says that if your overall income exceeds more than 10 lakh from some company and you're also getting bonds of that company you have to pay dividend distribution tax i mean it's not so simple tax laws are complicated generally this is the broad framework right <clears throat> so this is the meta a uh, confused petrol head is asking if i play invest 1 lakh in mf and pledge for trading and lose will i be making returns on mf yes your mf returns are still intact it's just that you have to pay for your trading losses out of your pocket from somewhere else now again types of government securities one is gsex of course government securities government bonds then there's something called p bills or treasury bills they are of three varieties 91 days maturity 182 day maturity and 364 day maturity now this is one of my <clears throat> most compelling use cases for investing in government securities see let's say that <clears throat> you have like a short term need right so i'm not talking about your long term interests or any kind of you know uh, i'm not asking you to invest in gsex t bills mutual funds etc for the long run but let's say that i have around 5 lakh in my account which i need for something 7 months from now you can't put this money in equity right obviously you need it 7 months from now if you put it in equity and if equity market drops like 5% or 7% then that is going to be a problem for you or if market goes down uh, 10% that is going to be a problem for you and 10% market happens every now and then right? that's not a big deal so let's say that you got 5 lakh in your bank and you need it for some trip or something or some purchase or something or college fees school fees something 5 lakhs from now 91 day t bill gives you a better return than a 91 day fd in a very good bank right you can go check the bank interest rates you can verify this so if you participate in an in treasury bill auction on a monday or a tuesday <clears throat> it's actually better for you to put your money park your money one year two year half half year fund etc in t bills right this return is almost always better than a fd return given by a mainstream bank of course a small finance bank will give you a better return but you know i wouldn't want to put my money in a small finance bank simply because i'm i'm very paranoid here right? like, like imagine right why i don't i don't put money in bank fds i put money in gsec imagine what is the level of trust i have in i have genuine trust issues uh one second huh? so better return than main bank fds main bank fds right so i'm not going to count like you know tinier banks and all 
big FDs for sure, it is better than that. So if you want to park your money for six months or one year somewhere, and you know for a fact that I need it after one year, <clears throat> then please consider T-bill as an alternative to FD. Of course, like Amit is pointing out, T-bills cannot be pledged. So I'll write that down because a lot of people here are traders. They are also issued by the government of India. Government of India, as safe as FDs, better than bank FDs, and better safety than FDs, better return also. I mean, better return and better safety, what else do you want? Yaar? Or kya aapko? So, but then uh, uh, you can't get out as and when you need. Bank FD, you can break anytime. T bill is difficult to get out of because. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I mean, it's just, you know, the, the problem is that it's better return than bank FD. Um, it cannot be pledged, but it cannot, I mean, it's just, how do you put it? If I want to get out of T bill, then I have to, uh, go to broking platform, enter that T bill in the terminal, hope that there's somebody who's a buyer might be difficult to get out of. But if you know for a fact that you don't need that money for 180 days and you need the money only after 180 days, then it's a good alternative, right? Then there's state development loans. That is, uh, you know, Karnataka, Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, Kerala, Madhya Pradesh, Himachal, you know, Rajasthan, all of these guys issue loans. They are issued by each state of the Indian Union. and one important thing I forgot to say, higher return, but I think I'll have another slide on that, right? So Sandeep is asking a very good question. <clears throat> Sandeep is asking, given the tax is 10.4% while investing in GSEC directly, why do you say we should invest through mutual funds in GSEC, which are taxed at 20.8%? The answer to that is, uh, your interest is going to be taxed at 30% in government so the two reasons one is your interest is going to be charged at 30 percent in you if you directly invest in uh uh government bonds right at your tax lab if you are at a 30 percent tax lab and also only capital gain but that is when you sell it you have a capital gain only that is a 10.4 percent so 30 percent on interest 10.4 on capital gain and you know, if you hold it long enough, all your interests are getting charged at 30%, right? But in uh, mutual funds, when you're exiting, it's not considered as interest, right? Although it is coming from interest, but it's not considered interest. So it is just given a uniform tax lab of 20.8%. Now, before March, there was indexation benefit of inflation because of which it used to come lower. And also you didn't have to reinvest the interest in bonds, it was easy to manage. Taxation was easier, reinvestment was easier. There was a benefit of inflation. Investing through GSEC mutual funds were a very nice idea before 31st March 2023. Now, it, like you pointed out, it doesn't make too much sense unless you don't want the headache of managing your reinvestment and you know the whole capital gain versus the other thing. So if your objective is to earn capital gains, for sure, government bond directly is better than MFs, right? But if your play is long-term interest, then government bonds 30% interest, if your slab is that, might not be a good idea. So, which is why I was saying it's not straightforward. Whether your investment should go to mutual fund or um, government bond has so many realities depending on your tax slab that you should take a call talking to your CA, right? But I, I hope I answered your question. Uh, um, Sandeep, and Sandeep, it's a beautiful question. Thank you so much for asking that. <clears throat> uh, so, uh, P bills, right? P bills are treasury bills issued by GOI, three tenors, 91, Single payment at the end of 100 rupees, right? Basically, it is also called deep discount bond. What happens is, P bill says, Ki boss, ek sal baad, I'll give you 100 rupees. Now, how much will you pay me right now? That is the question. That's a very straightforward question, right? Basically, 
the current interest if you put 100 right now in a fd you will get 107 in a year right so how much should you put right now to get 100 in a year so that is 100 divided by 107 right um, how much is that here 93 ish 94 ish something so i'll just uh, open the gap i used to be good at this stuff long time back when i was younger yeah it should be somewhere around by 107 somewhere around 93 half right so that will be the price 93 half. so basically t bill will be issued at a discount 182 d t bill should be something like 93.5 the you know uh, 182 uh, 364 day t bill will be something like 93 half this thing will be something like 90 uh, around three and a half rupees right 96 half and this thing will be one and a half maybe 98 half roughly rough rough maths right so you buy it for 93 half now and you get back 100 rupees after one year that is the arrangement of people and it is usually issued at a discount like 96 rupees and it is optioned every wednesday much better alternative to short term fd right now right and uh, this is what it looks like you can see this right this is the coin page i took a screenshot because i knew on sunday when we do this webinar there won't be an auction so <clears throat> This is how it looks like. You can see that 91 day T bill indicative yield. You are looking at the yield to maturity concept again. Yield is 6.79. Uh, second. Yield is 6.79. This is 6.91. This is 6.91. Generally, longer the tenure, higher the yield you get. Generally, usually, usually in usually in life, longer the tenure, higher the interest you get. Right? There are multiple reasons for that. Liquidity preference theory and all. But I'll have to start a macroeconomics 101 to explain all that. We'll not go there. Generally, your interest rate yield curve looks like this. Like your one month interest rate will be something like 3%. Six month inter interest rate will be something like 6%. Like basically, yada yada. If you go to a bank's uh, FD uh, rates, you'll see that uh, FD rates go up with time and then it comes down eventually. Right? So... So this is uh, GSEC, right? Uh, this is T bill, how it looks like. If you want to figure out how much will the price approximately be, it is very simple. Uh, so if it is saying that this is the price 106.79, what it means that if you invest 100, it will become 106.79 next year. So the current price is simply 100 divided by 106.79. So roughly the price will be your calculator. My God, I can't believe, you know, when I was 20, it's in my head, but I think I have become very old. Yeah, <clears throat> this will be something like roughly 93.6. Another trick to do this is uh, uh, you can just subtract 6.79 from 100 and thoda add a little bit. That is the trick, right? If you're into speed maths and all that. But uh, this is the price at which you will get the uh, T-bill right now, <laughs> right? Uh, sorry, not uh, again. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Not this. Um, uh, this is for one year. This is 91 day T-bill. So um, it's uh, not 6.79. It is 6.79 divided by 4. Sorry. sorry. Because it's quarterly, right? I'll just delete that. See, it's not 6.79. It is 6.79 divided by 4 because it's a 91 day table right how much is that uh, 1 and 6 and let's say 1.7 1.7 into 4 is yeah roughly 1.7 1.7% right so basically it is saying that if you put 100 it will become 101.7, right? Which means your price you should be looking at is 100 divided by 101.7. That will be roughly 98.4-ish, right? I'll just calculate that.
100 divided by 101 point yeah 98.32 right so yeah where is that pointer when i need it 0 0.32 right so this is the this is the math so you buy it at a discount and then you get a 100 rupee <coughs> uh this thing right so this is the investment in uh t bill right <coughs> Now let's talk it. Uh, look at uh, uh, SDN state development note. This is issued by the state. A higher interest rate than GSEC, lower safety than GSEC. This is auctioned every Tuesday. Uh, some examples are, uh, you know, uh, all these. I mean, if you can go to that coin page next week and look at it, and I can't show the example now because I didn't take the screenshot. I should have taken the screenshot. But you know, tomorrow or day after, you can log into coin and use. Tomorrow you'll see all the state government bonds listed in coin. Right now, important last slide, the cons of investing in GSEC. See, the single biggest con of GSEC is that before I even start, historically in the long run, in the long run, very long run, equity is better than GSEC. There is no question about that, that in the very long run, in the very long run, right? I mean, 10 year, 20 year kind of a long run. Unless we see like a uh, recessionary period and all, equity will be better than GSEC in the very long run if good times continue. And we all live in the assumption that good times continue, right? But having said that, <coughs> I would still say you have to put some percentage of your wealth in an extremely safe asset class. This is your rainy day fund. If everything goes wrong, if equity markets crash, etc., you need some money that is safe. In that way, GSEC is a very safe alternative to keeping your, you know, uh, rainy day fund here, right? So I'm not saying do not invest 100% of your wealth in fixed income, whether it is India government or America government or, un, you know, universe government doesn't make sense. If you're 70 years old, then probably yes, because, you know, the older you are, the higher you should have fixed income. But if you're a young person, you should be investing majority of your capital in, F, in uh, growth capital in equity. No questions asked, right? Um, but your rainy day fund, the fund. So I'll be happy to keep, you know, like, let's say that, you know, everything goes wrong. I still need some money to live, right? That money I'll be happy to keep in GSEC. I won't put that in equity, but then I'll have other funds, which is for the uh, worldview where, um, Things won't go wrong, right? I mean, we all live under the assumption that things won't go wrong, right? So, uh, for that worldview, I do keep the remaining funds in, you know, uh, equity. Of course, I switched from equity to bond in 2021, but that was more of a trading call I took. Uh, but, you know, uh, if you buy long term G6, their MTM value will change. Might change, will change drastically with interest rate changes. It might go up one or two percent for like a small change in uh, <coughs> interest rate. Like I showed you earlier, right? The 2060 GSEC for just 3.03 percent, it was half a percent moving. 0 0.03 percent change in yield changed the bond price half a percent. Imagine a full 1% change in yield, right? That is roughly uh, 30 times that number, 13 to half a percent, 15 percent change. So bond prices can swing very wildly when interest rates change, like super, super wild swings. Of course, it can be a good swing. It can be a bad swing. Imagine this, right? You bought like a 30 year old bond at a yield of 8% and then interest rates collapse. Now the bond interest rate is 7%. Your bond might be up 10%. Who knows, right? Because it's a long term bond and that is not going to happen with your equity when, in the times when interest rates collapse. So from that trading angle, buying a GSEC in with a very high yield, which is a long term GSEC might be very interesting. So I have like a lot of GSECs which are 2050, 2060, 2030, etc., uh, which I bought somewhere luckily towards the you know 
peak i mean if the interest rates go up again i'm toasted but theek hai what is right so but i'm telling myself that i am happy holding this to maturity at an interest rate of 7% i am happy uh, investing in gsec for a 30 40 year holding at 7% interest rate or some part of my portfolio and in between if a recession comes or bond prices uh, rise up or interest rates collapse i'll happily sell everything and make some you know you get my meta right so but then the problem is if you buy gsec with the wrong yield and interest rates go up then you will have a very wild swing right and you will actually have a downside and that is called duration risk so you have to be careful of duration risk very very important 0.03% on a 40 year old bond swung the bond price 0.5% so you know this ytm change is going to create this price change so please be very careful when you are investing in long term bonds the duration risk is very high this is called duration risk right now so if you want to sell in between it could be a problem also because in secondary market there's no liquidity of course you can do it using uh, uh, bonds and do not invest your funds which you need right now in long term maturity gsec you won't have exit it will be bad invest only those funds that you do not need you know in the short term but you know that it is my you know some other rainy day fund in the sense that if you have too much money that you don't need it should go into equity in an sip but if you have some money that you are thinking ki abhi nahi chahiye ek saal baad chahiye then maybe one year gsec one year tbl etc are very good alternatives right <clears throat> having said that let's say you bought a gsec at 7% thinking that 7% is a nice number and then interest rate goes up and your bond price falls down it's okay because as long as you don't sell and you hold it to maturity you can still realize that 7% in the long term right of course you'll have to manually reinvest the interest that's a different story um and uh, gsec mutual funds are better in this particular aspect but they charge fees right so this is the overall you know meta of uh, our webinar i'll just give one bonus point which i realized i did not address right that is the difference between gsec fixed maturity plans and gsec uh, variable maturity plan so if you want i mean again it might not be attractive now because of the entire you know uh, change in indexation benefit but let's say you want to invest in gsec that mature in 2028 what you can do is go to coin and search for gilt 2028 you can see bandhan krisil ibx indel uh, index fund 2028 bandhan krisil index fund 2028 hsbc krisil 2028 hsbc krisil aditya birla 20 what it means is that this fund invests only in uh sorry so yeah okay not bad this has gone up quite a bit you can see that right so this fund invests only in government securities that mature in 2028 so all the bonds which are inside this fund is 2028 bonds so if you want to take exposure to 2028 bonds you can invest in this thing so you can see 96% gsec of which you know three of them are these things 717828 Seven thirty-eight, twenty twenty-eight. Similarly, if you want to invest in twenty thirty-two bonds, you can see Cortex Nifty twenty thirty-two. Basically, you can just type a year and see if there is a. So you twenty thirty-six. You can see SBI Crystal, IBX Gilt Index Fund June twenty. So there is a fund that invests in a fixed maturity. So if you think that. 2036 is a good tenor to earn a 7% fixed return then you can invest your uh, money in you know maybe sbi crisil or nippon or hdfc nifty whatever which has the word 2036 basically if the name of the fund has a year attached to it what it means is that all the g6 they invest in are the g6 they mature in that year so this is a fixed maturity plan 
the good thing is that you are locking in your interest rate whatever there is a current interest rate and they charge a fee of 0.16 percent per year which is not very high so this is the expense ratio there is no exit load so it's great you know after one year if you exit there's no exit load at all so either you can in <coughs> invest in if i search guilt it may gives me like guilt funds this is not with a fixed maturity so the fund manager keeps on investing in whatever he likes so if you click on it you can see what are the constituents here government securities so see 7 10 20 29 20 27 this has t bill yeah wo falan dikha raha hai west bengal ka fund rajasthan ka 2033 bond these are all different but if you that is according to fund manager's interest but if you search for 2036 and invest in a fund that says 2036 you can be sure that all the money in this fund is getting invested in a bond that matures in 2036 so it's up to you whether you want to do this or that right and one last question which Altamash asked. Altamash asked, how do you calculate uh, fair value to buy GSEC from secondary market? See, that is very simple, Altamash. First of all, don't buy GSEC from secondary market. Because you won't get good liquidity. Part participate in RBI option, you will get the GSEC at the same price as the other big guys get, right? So obviously you won't be conned. You are at the same price as everybody else. So always participate in auctions. Don't do the other thing. The second thing, of course, is you can just search for bond price calculator. You can get a lot of bond price calculators. Any of them will do, right? The third thing you can do is, uh, I don't know if this thing has one, but let me see, search. So I, so I don't know the answer, but let me explore, right? Bond price formula, Google Sheets. <laughs> Yeah, see, there's a tutorial on this. You can you can just go to this. The other way, of course, is you can, you know, uh, uh, where is that other Excel sheet? One second. I'll just take out the Excel sheet which we were working with earlier. Oh, that is strange. I don't see that thing anymore. Just a second, I'm just bringing out the Excel sheet. <clears throat> that is strange. I don't know where the Excel sheet. So basically what I was trying to say is that, see, you can work backwards from yield. So basically put in a price, see what the yield is coming and then try to move the yield in such a way that the price uh, is finally what you want. Or you can use a function in Excel called solver. Solver will help you back calculate the price given the yield right so either you can use a bond price calculator from the internet or manually adjust yield price till you get the exact yield or use the solver function in excel to arrive at the price given a yield target right you can do any of this so anyway that is our conclusion of this webinar uh, again you know just to reiterate it does not make sense to put all your money in bonds right if you're a very young person you should be investing in equities for the long term but if you have some funds that you know you don't need now, but you need after a specific time, that money you cannot put in equity, right? Because we don't know next year if Nifty will be higher or lower. If I know for a fact that I need this money two years from now and I want a price to park that money for the next two years, then I only have two options, either FD or GSEC, right? Of course, if I'm saying I don't know what to do with this money, I'm going to let it grow for 20 years, you have to go to equity. It does not make sense to put it in GSEC if you think that this is my next 40 years ka investment right but if you want if you have a specific goal in mind three years from now i want to <coughs> buy a house and this is that fund probably gsec is a good place for that uh 15 years from now i want to think of my children's education gsec is not the place for that and fd is not the place for that short term very specific money that you have allocated for a particular duration always gsec long term for sure equity right uh this is the overall meta of gsec one more thing gsec can be pledged to release margin 100 percent if you are pledging your equity or equity mutual fund you will not get 100 percent margin you'll get only 50 percent cash 50 percent collateral gsec if you pledge becomes 100 percent margin which basically means if i have 30 lakhs of gsec 
I can trade for 27 lakhs margin. If I have 30 lakhs of equity, I can only get 15 lakh margin. The remaining 15 I have to bring in as cash, right? So that's a very big uh, difference. So this is our webinar on government security investment to our webinar, still 360 people online. I hope this was useful to you. I had a lot of fun doing this because, you know, GSEC is something which I, which I grew up on, you know, uh, first love, so as to say, <laughs> first trading and investment love, you know, when in 2009, when somebody asked me what I would become, I, I said that, you know, I would become a bond trader, but look at me, I've become like, I've gone to the dark side and become an options trader. So uh, uh, this is our uh, session for today. If you have any specific questions on, is this a good bond? I can't answer that because it's investment advice, which I'm not supposed to give because I'm a SEBI registered research analyst and we are not supposed to tell you if it's good or bad. So this is our uh, webinar today. I hope you have a wonderful Sunday. So till we meet again with another webinar, please uh, uh, stay safe, take care and have fun. Bye.